we had to make a bad drug legal, the worst choice was alcohol. Yeah, and the funny thing is, if you're trying to stop drinking, you need something better than alcohol. Mm -hmm. And alcohol is pretty good. Yeah. So you better find something a lot <laughs> better, man. Yeah, and, and it is. And then esteemable people do esteemable things. It's like, yeah, well, you want to figure out you want to figure out something that you're doing with your life that's worth not getting drunk and screwing up. Yeah. Right? Because that's fun. You might say, well, why do people drink too much? It's like, if you like alcohol, that's a stupid question. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's like, why do people drink too much? Well, because it's great. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, so why stop? Well, you do stupid things when you're drunk. You hurt yourself. You, you compromise your health. It's really hard on the people around you. You tend to turn into a liar and it screws up your life. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but it's pretty fun. Yeah. Well, it is. But you need something better than that. And what's better isn't being straight and, 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 and not making mistakes. It's like that's all prohibition in some sense. What's mm -hmm. better is, no, you need an adventure, man. You need to get out there and have something to do yeah. and, and something worth waking up for. And you need, that's the substitute for the addiction. Actually, the addiction is the substitute for that, if, if truth be known. I'm sure this must have happened when you decided to stop drinking. You must have thought this isn't good. I'm not going to be funny anymore. I thought that. I okay. thought I thought there was going to be ramifications. Yeah. Okay. And so, what were they? What What do you, What did you What did you foresee happening? I thought I wouldn't be funny. I thought that people wouldn't like me. I thought that um, I wouldn't be able to meet girls if I wasn't drinking or you know or having drugs or. Right. So that was things. what you were afraid of giving up if you stopped drinking. Right. What were you afraid of happening if you kept drinking? I was afraid of not achieving my dreams i was right. afraid of ending up a drug addict I yeah was afraid so of, hurt, okay. of dying in my sleep something you know dying under the influence okay so there so there, yeah it's not like that doesn't happen to comedians right it happens a lot yeah it's one right. of our dude it's one of our it's one of our go-to <laughs> well moves. right well right, exactly <laughs> well it's on an occupational hazard because you're up late at night and you're around <laughs> bars all the time it is it is because it is it, 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 because you're up late at night and yeah chris farley right here right right exactly. well and it happened to all sorts of comedians and rock musicians it usually happens at about 27. so okay so you were afraid you were afraid you're going to die or or you're afraid you're going to become addicted. So, so let's say what what of life what would have life like been like you for for you if you were addicted? So you don't have a career anymore. No. Right. So you've given all that up and failed. So that's fun. So that's going to drive you even more <laughs> yeah. towards drugs. Yeah, it would have been all my dreams. It would have been miserable. Right. It would right. have been so, hell. Exactly. Is that so? Why quit drinking? So I don't end up in hell. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's a reason. There's a reason to stop. And then if you make that hell real, it's mm -hmm. like here's all the details of my personal hell. Yes, let's avoid that. Right. So then you have something to run the hell away from. Right. So now you to have something towards. towards and something to run away from. And I'll say this too, as you, for if there's any young men or women out there who are listening to Jordan feeling like, well, I still, I don't know if, you know, if I start doing something different, like my friends are going to act a certain. Yeah, they are. They are. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But you're right. also, you're going to start creating conversations. You're going to become the intrigue because you're going to be bringing something new to the table. And you're also going to find out who your friends are. Yeah. Because if you're starting to put your life together and you have friends that object, those are not friends. Those are just people you know. They're not friends because a friend is someone, this is one of the hallmarks of a friend. Here's two hallmarks. Mm -hmm. A friend is someone you can tell bad news to and they won't tell you why you're an idiot and they won't interfere with your suffering. They'll just, they'll, just, they'll just listen and maybe they'll suffer along with you. Mm. Okay, so you can tell bad news to them and they won't tell you some worst thing that happened to them. They'll listen mm. and they'll suffer along with you. But a friend is also someone you can tell good news to. And the friend will say, wow, in this veil of tears, something good happened to you. Great, man. Congrats. I'm wonderful. It's rare. It's unlikely. Good for you. I hope 10 more things like that happen. And they're not envious and they're not jealous and they're not one up in you. And if you're trying to get your life together, it's actually, if you're trying to get your life together and your friends get in the way, that's actually real useful for you because you've now identified who your friends aren't. Mm. And you might think, well, I can't give them up. It's like, oh, yes, you can. And not only can you, you should, and it would be better for them because if they're aiming down and they want you going down with them, there's nothing good about what's happening to them, and there's certainly nothing good about that for you. Yeah, they're not going to, and then they're going to learn, wow, if I, I'm going to lose friends if I continue in these directions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly, exactly. Do, is it hard for, why is it hard for people to let go of what's so familiar with to them, even if it's bad? Well, because it's complicated, you know, and the thing, that's a really good question. You discount the risk of familiarity that they're familiar mm. with. So like, let's say... Because people are in relationships. People are in relationships with the drugs and alcohol. People yeah. are in relationships with humans. People are in relationships with jobs. People are in relationships mm. with their own selves. And they live, they're live. they living a lie every single day, but it's, yeah. it, it's familiarity. Yeah, well, you say, I have a job I hate. It's like, well, yeah, but I'm not dying from it. It's like not as bad as it can be. So you, you kind of, you factored in the risks already. They get invisible. 
You think, well, I can't jump out of this job because what about all the risk? It's like, yeah, no kidding. You got to make a, you got to get your resume in order. You got to send it out. You got to send 50 of the damn things out before anybody will call you back. Then you have to go get interviewed and maybe you're not any good at that. You have to come up with a story while you're a good employee and maybe, and maybe you're not yet. So you have to figure out how to do that. It's like, what about all these risks if I go look for a new job? It's like, yeah, absolutely, man. Those are risks and they're harsh and no wonder you're avoiding them. What about the risks for you to stay with this job you absolutely hate? Mm. Well, let's think that through. Okay, so I have this dead-end job. I hate it. I'm getting bitter. Where am I going to be in five years? I know where because I've watched this with people. You're going to be just like you are now, except a lot more of what's good about you is going to be gone. Mm. And a lot more of what's terrible is going to be amplified. And you're going to be like, in five years, you're going to be 10 years older instead of three years older. Yeah. Right. And Because so, it kills your spirit somehow. Oh, man. Yeah. So it's like, you think, oh, my God, there's a terrible risk in pursuing this new job. It's like, yeah, there is a terrible risk. There's a terrible risk in you staying with your job right now. And so one of the things that's re really freeing to understand is that you're screwed no matter what you do. Ah. Uh, there's no secure path forward. Give it up. It's risk everywhere. You think, mm. oh, my God, that's terrible. It's like, yes, except for two things. You can pick your risk. That's the first thing. So you get to pick your poison. That's ah. something. And second, you're a lot tougher than you think. Mm. So even though there's risk everywhere, if you confront it forthrightly, what you'll find is that you can actually handle the risk. And that's the security. If you really like alcohol, it does it does two things to you. It makes you more extroverted and mm -hmm. enthusiastic while you're on the ascending limb of the blood alcohol curve, which is why you have to keep drinking mm -hmm. once you start. Because if you plateau, that yeah. goes away. So you've got to keep drinking. Okay, so that's one thing. It makes you more enthusiastic and, and more full of positive emotion. And the second thing it does is reduce anxiety. Yeah. And so if you are a bit more socially anxious and you also have that positive response to alcohol, which everyone doesn't have, by the way, then it's a great drug. But the problem is it's, well, it's a great drug for the moment. Right. <laughs> right. There's there's consequences. Yeah, this you sounds know, when it's not great. Well, it, it also, alcohol is an interesting drug because it, it, it actually doesn't make people stupid. This has been tested. Like, people who are drunk will take far more risk. And you might say, well, that's because they're too stupid to understand the risk. It's like, no, they're not. If you ask them about the risk when they're drunk, they can outline it perfectly. Mm. What it stops them from doing is caring about the risk. It's actually, and that's part of the anti-anxiety component. It's like, yeah, the risk is, that's why you can drive around drunk at high speed in a car, which is really stupid thing to do yeah we used to do that in the back roads of northern alberta it's fun yeah you know but but people died all the time doing <laughs> it especially in the winter it's like yeah. wow this is great it's great until your head's gone through the windshield you know like so many things <laughs> yeah you know? it's like jumping off a cliff it's i'm flying which is true <laughs> until the last one tenth of a second it's like then you're not flying man it's yeah. like yeah yeah so so alcohol alcohol has exactly that effect it is a great anti-anxiety drug but it does stop you, and he said it stopped you, from learning the skills that you need in a social circumstance to be able to cope with that. Mm -hmm. So then it actually stops you from dealing with the anxiety. Mm -hmm. You don't have to learn how to overcome it. That's not good. Yeah, and alcohol also makes people aggressive. It's the only drug we know that actually makes people aggressive. Mm. So you see a massive effect on crime rates because half the people who murder someone are drunk. Oh, yeah. And half the people who are murdered are drunk. <laughs> And, you know, and you're most likely to be murdered by a family member. Yeah. So I've been joking with my audiences is like, well, if you really want to get killed, the best thing to do is go drink with a family member. <laughs> yeah. So, which is actually statistically true, which is terribly, terribly <laughs> comical. Crazy. It's like, yeah, go get drunk with your family if you want to die.